Hello everyone, this is Voltage Dev, and this is very strange because I've not done a video like this for a very very long time, but in this video I'm going to show you how to do a raycast with a render texture and also do like an interactable thing at the same time. So, at the moment I'm playing the sort of game that I like whipped up in I don't know like 10 minutes or something and uh, I'm inside of this sort of house which looks kind of nice it's very low poly but it looks kind of nice anyway but uh, if we go over to this light switch over here we've got a uh, white square just appearing which means uh, when we're looking at this object a ray cast is hitting the object and making my white box appear like a I highlight a thing in Majig, and uh, if we now press E on it, this appears. Yo! So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do all of this, but also, I you should have noticed that my screen is sort of squished. It's not like 16 by 9, it's not stretched like most game views are nowadays. It's 4x9, it's squished, it's like an old TV. So, how are we going to do this? I'm going to show you in this video. So right now, I've got my camera view, or my just my general view, back to the way it was. So now, I'm going to show you how to get the render, te render texture, get that up and running, and then I will show you how to do the ray casting with the render texture, because, to be fair, I tried looking up online on how you do a raycast from a render texture and it's because of how nobody does the same thing that I did I had to figure it out the long way around so I'm doing this video so that you guys don't have to go through all the pain that I did so first things first is down in our project we are going to right click create render texture and let's just call this camera view and there we go so to make it how it was before with the squished camera view we're going to go over to the camera view here and we're going to change the size from 256 by 256 to maybe like 1280 and that changes the sort of preview down here, which we're not going to worry about. And over here, we're going to change this to 1080. So that's pretty much all you really need to do, actually. So now, in order for our render texture to be inside of our game, because at the moment, the render texture is not actually in our game just yet. It's just in our project to make it actually in our game we need to add a raw image to our game and to do that we're going to go over to this canvas which has absolutely nothing on it for no reason whatsoever we're going to go over to this cam canvas and right click on it and then ui and then raw image and there we go look at the split just like that so now what we're going to do is on our raw image go to our width and height and we're going to put the width to, actually we're going to put the width to the exact same width as the other one, as the uh, render texture. So that's going to be 1280 by 1080. There we go. So it's covering the game view and we don't really want that. So what we want to do is... We want to actually take this camera view, which is the render texture, and drag it over into the texture of the random, random, raw image. And pff, look at that, it's, it's gone. But it does not mean that it's not working. It's just disappeared for now. And whilst we're at it, we're going to make sure that the raycast target is unchecked because we do not want any raycast to be um, detected by the render texture so now in order for our render texture to actually be well rendered we actually need to go over to our camera 
which is, well, in this case, because I'm using a first-person controller, which is actually from a an, from an asset from the asset store called Mini First Person Controller. I think that's what it's called anyway. It's 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 Mini First Person Controller. That's all you need to know. Let's go over to the first person camera and over here on the camera we are going to set the target texture at the moment it's on none but we're going to set the target texture to the camera view and there we go it's how it was before now in, again it looks squished at first i thought render textures were to sort of like crop the image but no it just squishes the image so uh, yeah so now it is back to looking like this. All the squish and stuff. So now to do the whole interaction thing and the highlighting thing, I'm not gonna like recreate it. I'm just gonna show you the code that I did. So this is the interaction code that I did, which is the raycast from the uh, camera to the object. But most raycasts are from the mouse. So what you would normally type in is say like ray ray is equal to main cam dot uh, screen point to ray and then you would put in your input dot mouse position. I mean you can do this but when we're working with a render texture unfortunately this does not work. Don't ask me why, because I have absolutely no idea why. I mean, it should make sense, but it doesn't really make sense to me. But just so that you know, this does not work, and I've tried it myself many times. So, get rid of this, and we are left with ray ray equals main cam dot viewport point to ray new vector 3 uh, 0.5 f 0.5 f 0. So what is this? Well, since we're just, you know, getting a ray to put into our ray cast, that, that is just a normal ray thing, we are getting the main camera, which is the first person camera, and we're getting the viewport point to ray. And what this means is we're getting the viewport here. This is the viewport, and we're getting the viewport, and we're getting a specific point in the viewport and using that point to cast a ray from that point. Now, what point are we talking about? The midpoint. Right in the middle. And how do we get there? How do we get to the middle? Well, simply, you use 0.5 as the X and 0.5 as the Y. And because it's 2D, we do not need a third point because, you know, three dimensions and stuff like that. So all we need is a half point on the X and the half point on the Y. And to be fair, if it said like our uh, say 0.5 and 1, where that would be would be up here. It would be in the middle at the top. And if it was 0.5 and wait, if it was 1 and 0.5, I think it would be over here maybe. So it would be middle and left. I think anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore, but <laughs> so now we have a physics.raycast, if physics.raycast, and we put our ray in, which is the viewpoint, viewport point to ray, and we've got the out hit, which is the raycast hit, and we've got two units in front of us, which sounds like so little, but somehow it's not, and we've got the interactable, which is uh, just a layer mask called interactable and what this is is if we go over to the camera uh, it's just a layer mask called interactable and if any object has the interactable layer mask it means whatever the raycast hits and if that layer mask is interactable on that object it will be picked up and no other objects will be picked up if it does not have interactable on the layer mask. So now, highlight the white square will just appear along with a debug.log high. 
if we hit the object, aka the light switch. And if we don't hit it, then it will make it false. So that is the raycast from the viewport point. Technically from the camera, but it's from the viewport. A view viewport. And that's just it for the raycast. And that's only for highlighting an object. To actually interact with the objects, like say mouse click or E or anything like that, then we technically do the same thing. But in this instance, we're going to use uh, input got a uh, dot get key down key, key code dot e or mouse button down. That's the left click, by the way. Zero is left click. One is middle click. I'm pretty sure. And two is right click. I'm also pretty sure. So then here's the same thing. Physics raycast ray out hit to interactable, you know, same thing. But here we've got hit dot collider dot game objects dot get component and stuff. So what's happening here? Well, hit is from the out hit, so we're getting the result from the point in which we hit the object. So because the raycast is hitting the object, we're getting the point in which it hits it you know, so on and so on, and we get, we're trying to get the collider of the hit point, so if the raycast hits the object, it, well, it's going to, it's going to have a collider, isn't it, like a box collider, mesh collider, whatever, it's going to have a collider, and let's just do game objects, because, well, it's a game object, it's, <laughs> it's not anything else, and we're going to get the component interactable, so, what does this mean? Well, on the light switch here, let's click on it actually. Uh, why aren't you clicking? Okay, so here is the light switch. For some reason, it, I don't know why I wasn't clicking, it was a bit weird. But here we have the light switch, and over on our properties, we've got box collider, of course, because ray cars and stuff, and we've got the interactable script. So this is what this is talking about. If the ray cast hits the object, and if the object has an interactable script. It will access the interactable script and it will uh, access this method on interact. And what this method is, let me just uh, save this. The on interact method is this. And this is a separate script called interactable because, you know, it's the interactable script on the game object. And here we have a, ser a serialized field unity event interaction and you have to have you actually have to have this and you actually have to have using unity engine dot events otherwise this just will not work so then we make a public void and of course public void means public method and void doesn't uh return anything because you can have like a public ball or public float you know so on and so on we have a public void on interact and inside of this, we've got interaction.invoke. So what is this doing? Simply, this is just invoking whatever is inside of the interaction unity event. And to see what's inside of the unity event, let's go back to the light switch. And here is the unity event. So random text, which is actually, where is it? So the random text is right here. And let's just click on it. So that's the yo thing. So we're getting the random text uh, game object, which is actually the text. And we're accessing the game objects dot set active, which is the tick, you know, next to the name. And we're just setting the active on. That's all you're doing. And that is how you do inter... Um... What's going on? Okay, so now it is working properly again. Don't ask me why that happened. Like, it took me about five minutes to, like, try and get it back to normal again. Because for some reason, uh, no matter what I was doing, um, it just w wouldn't, like, bring up this sort of uh, white box and it wouldn't, like, let me interact with it. And I checked on the code, I checked everything, and everything was the exact same. So I was, like, so confused on why. But, yeah. 
that is it, everyone, of the tutorial. Hope this all helped you out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.